Okay. All right. How y'all doing? Top of the world. Bryson McCauley. Last of a dying senior. I'm doing a guest host for Street Motivation Magazine. And today we have entrepreneur, rap artist, grand storyteller, Loon from Pomona. Now, for me, you know, I got these list of questions and all that. But for me, I want to know where did it all start for Loon in regards to the music? Man, for me, for me. All, all my music started with my big bro, man. I always going to pay homage to him because my brother always got me into the music. So it, for me, it always started there. All right. All right. And like, what was that that first initial step that you took? Like, man, this is what I want to do. How did you try your hand at it? Man, I, I would just try freestyling. I would just literally try freestyling. I ended up meeting a, a label. Uh, it was two gentlemen, Chuck and Big Rude from Arsenal Records back in 1996, and they basically showed me how to structure even writing a bar. Mm. All right, all right. And for me, I looked at your content, you know, and that I'm going to take you back over a decade when you made the mm. song Mama Said, right? <laughs> yeah. Damn, yeah. yeah. And you and you said a line in there that struck a chord with me. I I think partially because my brand is last of a dying seed, and you made mm -hmm. a statement about taking care of your seeds because they're the last of a dying breed. Yeah. And that was powerful for me. I grew up in the hood, east side of Long Beach, and all that, and seeing so many of my friends and families come and go, you know, homes yeah. and all that, to where life kind of seems like an illusion sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for you to say that, because once a person have kids and already having the knowledge and experience you have about how things go in the streets, you don't want that for them. So yeah. that, that kicks you into a different gear. So I just want to know that's just me talking, but I want to know what was going on in your life and in your mind at that time when you said those words. Man, it, this is something that was instilled in me through my pops because he always he always instilled in me and my brothers. Kids don't ask to be here. So if you have those kids, make sure you you give them what they need. Right. I mean, so I could, I could never say he wasn't there and get to give us what we needed. I mean, I just made different choices. Right. So, okay. so when I had so when I had kids, I I just it just instantly clicked something that was instilled in me to make sure I took care of these kids. Mm. And, it, and it's crazy because even even when you mentioned in that song. My daughter was in that video and she was, she was real young. She's about to be 20 now. And I'm still just making sure I do what I'm supposed to do as a parent. Right. I was about to ask you that too. Do you think that you lived up to that statement since then? Yeah, I, I can actually say that I have. I mean, All right. I've seen a lot, a lot of people, a lot of homies who, who, who didn't really get the chance to, to raise their kids how they needed to be. I mean, so. It, it, it could have just ended up a different outcome. Right. Yeah, I, I actually accomplished that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I take pride in that and say that I'm a good parent. All right. That's what's up. And going from the streets to hip hop is kind of like, it's, it's really not no easier path to take, you know, because the streets mm -hmm. spill over into hip hop. So yeah. <laughs> since then, yeah. since you started, like, how hard has it been to navigate that world the industry man for me for me you gotta you literally gotta keep it separate separated i'm i take pride in literally telling myself be a businessman out of it if i take care of my business everything else will follow right all right so, you know. and you a manager right now what you what you what level you on right now ah man Man, it's just like I got one partner who stuck with me, man, for the long run. I, I didn't help try to bring up a lot of people who've been around me, such as my partner Young Creep. If you if you know the music in my history, like that was one of my power ones. Uh, right now, it's it's my artist, Mister For Sugardale, aka mm -hmm. For Show The Don. All right, he's a rap, he's a rapper and a singer, which I, I just got him to tap into a different side because, like, hey, you know, you can actually sing. Yeah, you kind of use auto tune like T Pain a little bit, but you know how to work it. Mm. You know, and also uh, one of 
my partner's out of St. Louis, man. Two Face Price is the P. Mm. Now, them is the two people I'm rocking with right now in the music, man. So I'm putting out new music from them, and I always got content coming. Man, you got so much music. I couldn't even get through all of it. But just the, I would say for people that's listening to really understand Looney's wide range and versatility, all you got to do is tap into the my city that stack my paper and I mm -hmm. can't where yeah. you're able to switch up how you deliver it to the people so that it comes across. Yeah. So I like that too. My personal favorite is Fly Low though. Out of, <laughs> out of all of them. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorites. Shout out to Dre Boogie, man. Cause for the longest I tried to make that record happen, Dre Boogie like, you gonna pay me, man. You gonna pay me. And it really just dawned on me. Hey, you know what? Handle the business. You know what I'm saying? You'll get farther. So shout out to Dre Boogie because he did teach me that lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to him. So, uh, Man, and with like, what are you still both feet into the music, or are you working another job right now? Man, I'm. You remember in Living Color? Yeah. I, I personally believe I was related to the Headley, so I got many jobs right now. Oh. I mean, like, for me, for me, I, I do music because I love to do music, and that's why I still do it. I'm, I'm pushing artists. But at the same time, I got a I got a catering business where I got a taco cart. Mm. I also, but you know everything everything for me, I I've been funding everything I'm doing. I'm pushing this truck, so I'm, I've been pushing eighteen wheelers. Man, it's, it, it, the music gave me avenue. So I mean, I could keep my foot in all of them. All right, all right. So driving a truck, I know it. You know, I write screenplays and stuff too. So yeah. I know with just being an artist and a storyteller that the more you read, the more information you consume, the more you experience in life, the more you have to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it deepens your understanding to where that influences what you begin to write about after that. So you driving on the road, hitting state to state and learning yeah. all these different things throughout life. Like how yeah. has that influenced your music? Man, it, it influences the music, but also it give me a, it give me plenty of time to think. So mm -hmm. I use that as a mobile office. I, I get a lot accomplished, think clearer when you when you just get a different peace of mind away from the streets. Which we're not wrong with the streets. We didn't been there, right? You know, this is this has opened up my mind to a lot. You know what I'm saying so. With like you said, with the screenplays, I, I got a seventeen minute mini movie called The Closest One to You, just from not wanting to shoot a music video and just deciding to write a screenplay oh. to shoot instead. Right. That's I mean, amazing. It, it, it keeps my mind open. So, I mean, I, I use it like I use it for what it is. Right. A lot of sense and clarity. And what's one of the most memorable experiences you had throughout your career? I got so many, many man. I got so many good <laughs> memories, man. I, right. I, I've been blessed to do some. I've been blessed, bro, to do some good shit. My my favorite memory for me with the music, I, I would say it would have to be the time when I was still kind of had my feet wet, and I got to open up for Crazy Bone and Mo Thugs. Mm. He did a show in Fresno, Mr. Nina Ross and uh, Hicks, aka Shavaco. Like we went in for a set, we went in for sound check, and there's nobody there. Like we came back, I was like, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. Right, and, and that made that was like one of the one of the best memories. But I got a lot because I mean I've I've been able to shoot videos for Sugar Free Cocaine. I, I, I've got my feet out here, and so you know, what I mean, I got a lot of good memories. Right, man, that's that's powerful, and. You got another song called Fourth Down. Right? Yes, back. <laughs> hey, even while we even talking to that, let, let's let them know because you know, yeah. yeah, I was still young loon back then, but as a as a I hit with Dre Boogie, I mean I, I transitioned into that that shows you my growth from the transition from street to actually being full on actually doing this music how I wanted to do it. Right. I had, a, I had a gentleman tell me back in the, in the 90s, 
He said, when he starts spitting it out, I was coming out from his mind to the paper. Mm. He gonna be a force to be reckoned with. You know I mean? mm. They're like from fourth down to four my city. Right. You know, right. Man, that song hit me so hard because you know, you know, as artists and as storytellers, we 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 dig deeper beneath the surface whenever we see some or hear something and stuff like that. So just by hearing that, I'm a I'm a risk taker type of dude to where yeah. fourth down to me signify like you know, this, we in a high stakes game. And at this point yeah. in the career, we either going to win or it's going to end, but we going for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to so, go for it. You got to go for it. Right. I mean, hey, they, and I keep that fourth down mentality. I mean, because I got a project out right now, seat at the table. I All right. Song with Glass. I got a song with Glasses Malone, one with Bush Cassidy. Oh, you got right. to keep that fourth down mentality is. Right there, so I'm going for extra yardage with, with those pieces. You know what I mean? Right. Man. That's the spell. So how how do you being into the business more than the artistry, even though you're doing both? How do you balance the two? I mean, like I said, I I make the music just because I love to make the music. So I'm more I'm more business oriented to it now that I'm more older, which I've always been more business orientated. So it's like I make the music. I, I never really expected the music to be recognized. I just made it because I like to make it. You know what I mean? So I'm always more business. All right. All right. And did any of your kids get into get into the music? No, nah, they'd be like, Dad, cut that shit off. <laughs> yeah. They want to hear some yeah, all you play is independent music, Dad. Right. <laughs> My daughter, like, I want to hear Janae and Iku. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And on the independent uh, tip, right, I want to know because everybody just don't go independent intentionally. They do it because they have to. Like, why did you mm -hmm. do it? Uh, man, a couple opportunities. Like, when I was young, First time somebody offered me money for a deal was seventy thousand, but it was like I stayed independent because it, it it got to be what can they do for me that I'm not already figuring out on my own. Right. So if you, if you take the time to really just learn the game on your own, you you do better. Right. You do better. You do better. You feel me? Right. That's so yeah. I did. That's that's all it is. All right. And at what point did you? Recognize the power of social media, man. For me, the very beginning from the, the MySpace day, mm. I, I had a following on MySpace. I was running around. Shit, shit. I remember All Star Weekend '07. Mm. I had a I had a feature on Young Loon cover on a burn CD, but. That showed me the power of social media because I just kept having people take pictures. He'll take this picture with this, this album cover. Hold this, hold this. And it, the social media game, it made people follow. All right, let me see who this is. But at the same time, I used the Master P tactic because right. Master P always made you want to hear the music without hearing the music. Mm. So that, that showed me the power of social media. I, so I recognize it way back in my space. Mm. And how how do you stay inspired after all this time? Cause tell the people what year did you actually start rapping? Nineteen ninety six. All right. So now they get a visual of that. So what kept you inspired all the way through? For me, the, just the love of the music, man. I, I love everything from, from making music, music from the time you put in on production. To learning how to engineer the when I first learned to lay vocals. My buddy Clever Kism, he's got shout out to him, man. We got a group called The Counters. He showed me how to engineer, and that's that's what really gave me the love for it because he showed me something. They left the studio about eight hours, but six of those hours I was able to recreate the steps I learned watching him record. Mm. And he was he was able to come back and engineer. So that's what really that's what really makes me love the music. Like everything about it, the, the creative process. From from writing it to just thinking about what you're trying to write down. Let the beat talk to you. All of that creates 
creates me to just be creative. And I feel like, like you said, the storyteller, the content I'm creating is is through storytelling. Right. So you gotta stay, you gotta stay creative and love what you do to keep doing it. Right. So it, it just kept me inspired to keep doing it. Right. Just because I love it. Right. And to take a, a young artist of this time up under your wing, like he wanna he wanna mess with you. He he understands your push. He heard about you through the grapevines, or he just took it a liking to you when y'all met. But to take a new artist up under your wing during this era, when you see how they rapping now, like what new artists are you feeling today? Do you have an interest in a new the new music that's out here today? Honestly, no, nah, man. It's like I, I know a couple of people that get down. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to show a couple of people like uh, Westside Cat. Mm. That's somebody I'm trying to show. Is he he actually got the potential to not be what they are now? All right. He he, and I say that to say he he, it's somebody in a younger generation for me who's still around. Like it's it's a la we the last of a dying breed, bro. As far as mm. People who actually write songs and, and really try to create. Because everybody else is, I've been in the studio with new dudes and it's, they're trying to think of it bar for bar. And it's like, you're wasting a lot of time if you don't just think about what you're going to put on this paper and visualize how you're going to do it on the paper. It's like, the, the artist I'm dealing with for Show to Don, he, he, he's the last in that generation. Right. So it's like, for, for me, a new artist would have to be able to take the guidance because I got a lot of game to give them as far as the music go. Right. But they don't want to listen. So it's like, who can you give it to besides somebody that's still cut from that part of the cloth where the material was gone? Right. And have you ever, like, experienced a bad deal to where you like, man, I should have never did that? Not for me personally. Right. I've seen I've seen artists take bad deals. Man. I, don't, right. I, don't, I don't even want to put motherfuckers out there. Like, <laughs> shit, technically, I mean to do it. There, there was an artist. Right. There was an artist I I seen. Man, he was out of San Diego. Ran with some other San Diego artists. All right. You know what I'm saying? We go, we go leave it at that. You know what right. I'm but he he signed a contract for one point an album for a seven seven album deal. Mm. One point of album. Wow. I mean, that that was like that was one of the worst deals I've ever seen somebody taking. It. And it's like he took it. Right. I mean, but if you if you don't know, it's like like I said, I was I was offered an opportunity and it was like, what can they do for me that I'm not doing for myself already? Right. If you take the time to learn the game, man, you'll get farther. Definitely. So yeah. All right. And you got another song called Never Be the Same. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's one of my new that's one of my new joints. Exactly. So yeah. y'all gonna check that out. And one of the lines you 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 said up in there was niggas switch faster than a coin flip. Right? Yeah. And I know it's sort of shit. Yeah. And I know in the streets and in hip hop. The two biggest concepts is loyalty and betrayal, you know, amongst our culture and our people. So, but I want to know from you, when you made that song, like, can you give us more context than what's said in the music? Man, it was like, you know, all right, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm a dude, man, it's like, people might think I'm mean, but I, I got a good heart and I'm solid. Uh, like I said, I, I've tried to help many people through my years of music. And I've seen some of the most disloyal shit when it comes to me just trying to help somebody do some music and learn the game that they don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. It's a lot of personal experiences to niggas backbiting or thinking they undercutting you right. that inspired that song. You know what I mean? All in, right. in a lot of sense, a lot of people, niggas, niggas speak bad on you when you can't have access to you. Right. So it's like it make it make them do snake shit. So, you know, once you do that, it came out to be that. It'll never be the same. Right. Any any 
it shit. You can't once you burn a bridge, cross the bridge before you burn it. Right. Don't just burn the bridge. A lot of niggas can just burn the bridge before they even cross it. But so for me, a lot of that'll never be the same. Mm. That's deep. And what is like I know it's many of them, but what is like your top revelation or something you realize while being in the industry that you didn't know prior to? It just what that experience taught you that you carry with you and if you can at least, you know, be charitable for a minute and give the people that nugget. Man. Take take the time to really learn the game, you know? Mm. If not, you're gonna end up with some bad deals and some fucked up places out here. That's that's really the the lesson you gotta learn out of it. Right. Yeah, because not knowing nothing, that shit is expensive. Like yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you some gotta... people some people just want the game handed to them. It's like if I choose to try to hand you the game, evidently I can see the potential. Like you say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I can try I can give you the game, but it's on you to learn. Right. And people be 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 if like reverse psychology, people be fooling themselves, looking at you and be like, Well, you're not in the mansion that I want, so why would yeah. I listen to you? Not realizing yeah. like, man, he's giving you what he wish he would have known at your age. And the, the main thing I would tell somebody, oh, man, I was a fresh young buck. So main thing I could tell one of these youngsters now, get a regular job, work, take the long route. Right. You know what I'm saying, like, I might, I might not be a millionaire, but I'm comfortable. Right. You know what I mean, but at the same time, I, I learned that lesson in the beginning. I've always had a regular gig to make sure I had money in case I never blew up. Right. So I decided to make music for the love of the music. Right. At the same time, that's what I would tell a youngster. You you can have it the slow route. All money ain't good money. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting too on a on a three wheeler, old school and a new school car. But that's because I'm taking the slow route. You know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. And in your in 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 the first phase of your career, like technology wasn't booming like that like you know i know that just i'm 33 yeah. but i know that growing up as a yeah. kid ain't nobody talk about technology we trying to go viral yeah. in the street so yeah now that you like how easy or hard has it been for you to adopt these new technology tools in order to grow your career uh, i've been able to adapt from the very beginning that's what i'm saying so i, I learned it even about social media, I, I learned the game straight up from watching different dudes in the Bay when I was independent, pressing up my own units to when the technology was you had to go to an internet store and pay $3 to use the internet for an hour. Mm. Which, and now, look at now, you know what I'm saying? On, on the palm of my hand, bam, we having a we having this this meeting, you feel me? Right. Like, so I, I've been able to adapt from the very beginning and I never understood that. I've always been super tech savvy and able to move with the times. Right. All right. And I asked you what what keeps you going, but now I want to be more specific as to like who inspires you in the industry. Man, for me, for me, it's still a lot of old school people. You know what I'm saying, right. still a lot of shit out of cocaine's music, sugar free, spice one. I love more in the I love more hood shit out of the independent. Which I say they independent, but at one point they've been mainstream. You know what I mean? So still listen to touch for my blood a lot. Uh, in a newer man, still listening to Pop, Richie Rich, the delinquents, three times crazy, kick the sneak. I mean, I, I still keep it more old school with what I listen to. Right, that music was music then. That, so that would also help you stay inspired because they made music. Right. What about uh, Eve Poetry? Yeah, man. If, if you don't know, I got a project out there where I got a song with E40. It's called Tripping I'm Not, man. Y'all look for All that. All right. Yeah, yeah go man. check that out. That's yeah. what I said. The catalog's so big, I couldn't even get yeah. to it today. Yeah, you, I got I to gotta pay homage where it's due, man. I, my whole shit, even like I said in the beginning with my brother, but my whole music game comes from the Bay Area and, and my push of how I push. Mm. 
the Bay, the Bay Area, they grinders, man. Everybody from the Bay was grinders. RBL Posse, totally insane. Like, yo, Sebo, that's that's one of my favorite people right. to still listen to to this day. Right. Shit, matter of fact, I ain't gonna even cut the shit. That's my favorite artist. I always told the homies, even when I was in the streets, you get locked up and you get out, hey, look for a new Sebo album. Right. I mean, like, so shit. I still listen to just more old, older shit that I listened to back growing up. Right. And what projects are you working on right now that hasn't launched yet, but that you're your teeter your messing with? I got the uh I got the Mr. Looney Moto, the lost text about to drop, but I'm working on He Who Remains. All right. Because out of out of everybody that did music with me throughout the years, I'm the one that remains here. And I, I tried to explain that to my artist Young Creek back in the day. Like, what's your plan to sustain longevity? Oh, yeah, and then uh, the for show the Don project. Uh, it's the Mister for Sugardale for show the Don variant, which is him transitioning to an R and B artist as well as his rap music. Mister uh. Sugardale was his rap persona, and for show the Don would be his R and B persona. That's the dude on the hook for for my city. And, and also, I got my hand in Two Face Prices P's new album, Continuous, out right now on all platforms. Right. And coming up in the streets, very few of us think longevity, right? We mm-hmm. like here and now and all that. So when did Joe, did you always think longevity, had that type of mindset with the things that you was doing or when did it click? So for me, when when I started to do music, I knew I wanted to be able to have longevity because at that time for me, Too Short was already 10 albums in. Right. And I'm like, wow, who, damn, who, who is this nigga? This nigga got ten albums, right? That's that's like when I when I first heard of Mozzie, everybody heard of Mozzie, but I was when I first heard of Mozzie, I'm like, hey, this dude got twenty two albums, dude from the Bay, right? So for, for me, I was like, that's the kind of artist I want to. I'm older than Mozzie, so I'm just saying, using him as an example of somebody else I looked and seen. In E40, for that matter, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they had the catalog. So for me, it all, I always wanted to have that longevity in that body of work that I've seen people from the Bay have. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. And how close do you think, how many how many albums are you in right now? Man, when I, when I was rapping under the name Young Loon, eight projects. Under, under the umbrella of my my adult persona, I'm 23 projects in. Mm. So I got to where one of my artists got to because Sebo's got that body of work. E40's got that body of work. Master P put out so much on Low Limit that he had a body of work. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I've, I've created that body of work, and now I'm just trying to clean up old stuff. I don't necessarily even make super new music i just i have so much music to clean up and just keep putting out right right i created the body of work and and that's what i want y'all to do man just if you get a chance just check out check it out i got a body of work online definitely definitely my hand in a lot definitely and most artists have came to realize uh, uh that music is pretty much just a stepping stone you mm-hmm. know, you got exceptions to the well. Really, as far as longevity, Jay Z, uh, Snoop Dogg, all these E folk, all these people that's showing like, no, nah, you can rap as long as you want to rap. You know what I'm saying? Your loyal fan base is gonna follow you. But even they shown like this is just a stepping stone. We're gonna you get the bag, and then we're gonna invest mm-hmm. it in these things. Yeah. So what's show what's show tactics? Yeah, like I said, right now I got, I got a full-on production company. I mean, I got a I got a red camera. I elevated. I started with a cheesy twenty-dollar camera and start was trying to shoot videos. I elevated to a red camera. I got a clothing line called Sociopath Clothing. Sociopath mm-hmm. underscore clothing on Instagram. All right. It's like I've transitioned with 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 the technology and everything with it, and still just. It all like it all comes from the music. It's all in the music. I mean, I even got a podcast. It's in the music with the show to Don. 
and fire lane faulty. I'm saying so. I, I I keep my hand in everything. Right. And was it is it a a, a audio podcast or a visual too? It's, it's an audio and visual. All right. So All right. Up, you know what I'm saying. All right. Y'all go check that out. <clears throat> and is there any like artists or you just highlighted your projects or any shout outs that you want to give you know somebody want to get a flowers to or anything like that and straight up man if, if i'm gonna give flowers i'm gonna give flowers to the people that put me in this position that i'm even in so from the jump the very first person who who turned over some music and was like here a little uh, here put it out yeah you gotta you gotta have them here do something with it the first so, Rob Don Dollar Signs, aka Gorilla Dog, Showbiz from the Young Hyenas, Big Tiny, um, the people who was around from Power 10, Clever Kism Street Institute, mm. always Big Sir Loon. And I'm going to definitely give flowers to Street Motivation Magazine, man, because y'all, y'all got an opportunity for me and I'm, and I'm with it. So, you know what I'm saying? Them, yeah. them is the people I'm going to give it to. Definitely. So, definitely. I'm you, man, for this interview, bro. Flowers, you know what I'm saying? Got to give them where you can smell them. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Y'all heard it here. His catalog is vast and, you know, on, works on all levels. So y'all go check it out because y'all going to learn something. Y'all not only going to vibe to the music. Y'all not only going to be entertained by the visuals. Y'all not only going to, you know what I'm saying, know things that you didn't know before. Like the whole thing is we're trying to navigate this world on a whole nother level. You know, and by mm -hmm. studying his body of work, it's going to allow you to do that because he's coming from a, a pure standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Like everything he know and seen is 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 through and through. So, but Loon Moto, y'all go check him out. Look him up. Google him right now as we speak. Go look up all his projects, yeah. his Instagram and mm -hmm. Spotify, Spotify, yeah, YouTube, it, everywhere, man. I've, I've been here many moons, man. Just. All y'all got to do is Google me, man. Right. And I know that for sure because as soon as I heard that fly low, I instantly went on Facebook music like, man, I hope I can play this in my stories right now. So it's on my yeah. stories right now. So, uh, but yeah, though, I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. You have a good one. Thank you. Stay blessed, bro. All right.